Hello, my name is Matt, and I'm going to be teaching you how to use the PCB G-Code EagleCAD user library program to make G-Code for a mill. First, download EagleCAD if you haven't already done so. Come to cadsoftusa.com, click on the Downloads tab, and click on Download Eagle. You can download this for Windows, Linux, or Mac. I'm not going to download it because I already have it. Next, Google search PCB G-Code Forum spelled kind of funky like this. You're going to need to download the user library program used for making the G-code. Click on software, then click on downloads, then click on release 3.6.04 for Eagle 5 and 6. Download the attachment, and whenever it's finished downloading, extract it to a good location. I have saved it to my documents right here. We'll come back to that later. Next, open EagleCAD. It should come to the control panel. Go to Options, Directories, User Language Programs. Now under this tab, take the location of the extracted folder and put it here. Now don't do what I did the first time and put some random folder in here. Just select the outside folder layer. Okay? Press OK. Now teaching you EagleCAD is something that I don't really want to do in this tutorial, but there's some great tutorials on YouTube you can learn to use it, and if you need help, feel free to ask me. I have already made a board that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So what, you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my board, and this is what it looks like when you finish making a board in EagleCAD. This one's a little bit complex, but we can work it. So now in order to make G-code for this board, we're going to go File, Run, and then we're going to go to Documents or wherever we saved it. Go to PCB G-code, double click that, then double click on PCB G-code Setup. This will bring up this little GUI here that will help you set up your uh, PCB G code um, files. Okay, so first of all, this will generate up to four files. It will generate the top and bottom traces and then the top and bottom drills. The outlines are the traces that are going to be cut out and the drills are the through holes for components. You can also mirror the bottom if that's what you need to do. First checkbox here, show preview, will bring up a preview window whenever you render the board. This is extremely useful, leave this checked. You can do spot drill holes and that's, yeah, just leave that checked. The isolation determines the, the width between the traces. So the minimum isolation you want to be about this and the maximum isolation you want it to be about this. That's 0 .001 and 0 .02 if you can't tell. It's important not to make the minimum isolation too small or else your bit may actually obliterate your PCB traces if it's too thick. It's important not to make the maximum too large or else you might end up doing 13 or 14 passes which will take all day. The step size is the distance between your uh, traces and should ideally be one half to two thirds of your etching tool diameter. This is where your etching tool diameter goes. I use a 0 .01 millimeter V-bit mill. So right now it says 0 .019, this should be 0 .0025. Next, under the Machine tab, this gives us some options for the actual milling machine itself. First of all, the units are in inches, well for my machine at least. So select inches. Most CNC machines are in inches. Next. The spindle spin-up time is irrelevant since we turn the spindle on before it goes. However, if you're using a nicer CNC machine that has the spindle set to the machine itself, then this will allow you to dictate the amount of time the program waits before starting the execution of the code. Next is the feed rates. Many people have good results with the feed rate in the X and Y directions being 10 inches per minute any faster and the bit will start to chatter and will generally wreck your board. Any slower and you're going to be waiting all day. So 10 is a good compromise. I've gotten very good results at 10 inches per minute. You can try going a little bit faster or a little bit slower, but 
it's ultimately trial and error. The Z feed rate should be somewhere between 2 and 5. That way when you're drilling, you don't actually end up splitting your bits, breaking your bits. It's more for the really, really tiny drill bits that you're using than anything else. I would recommend 2 to 5 inches per minute depending on what type of work you're doing. Over here we have the Z axis parameters. The Z high axis parameter is the high parameter which is where it goes for a safe height. I have it set at half an inch but you can set this 2 inches, 6 inches, however high you want. It will go there when the program is finished running. The Z up height is the height that the axis will go to whenever it's jogging. In other words, when it's not actually milling and it's going fast, it will go to this height. This is usually set between 0.1 and 0.2 inches. That way it doesn't have to go up so high in order to go all the way across the board. The Z down height is the depth that your milling traces will be. The default height is generally pretty good. The drill depth height should be set equal to the thickness of your PCB. If it's too small, the drill won't go all the way through. If it's too large, you're going to drill into your table. The drill dwell is the amount of time that the mill will spend at the bottom of the hole. Leave this at default unless you're absolutely sure that you're going to be having trouble with sawdust in your holes, in which case you may increase it slightly. The tool change is not important since we'll be using the same tool. However, if you are going to be changing tools halfway through, then you can change where the tool, where the spindle will go to so you can change the tool. Honestly, if I were to be doing a tool change, I would set X0, Y0, and Z like 2 or 3 inches off of the board. The miscellaneous parameters are not going to be important to us. This tab dictates the G-code style. There are different G-code styles for different softwares that run mills. I use EMC, so use EMC. But you can also use Mach 3 or Turbo CNC. This one right here generally works with uh, homemade stuff pretty well. So just select EMC and you'll get good results. G-Code Options tab has got a bunch of random stuff that they didn't have room to put under any of the other tabs. Right here you have the file comments. These are comments that are go in the G-Code file that let you know what when this was generated, how it was generated, what it's on there, all that other stuff. File naming dictates the names of the actual G-Code files themselves. Feel free to play around with this a little bit. I just leave it default. Other options include some other things that are for a mill. For example, compact G-Code or use simple drill code. These we can all just leave as default. Um, make sure that if you are going to be milling something in the Y plane to the X plane that you flip the board in Y instead of X. But that's very rare for that to happen. The next tab is titled Plugins. I do not have any plugins installed on mine. Um, this right here is just a calculator. I have no use for it, so I'm going to skip it. Right here, in the other tab, you can reset to the factory defaults if you mess something up terribly. So, what you can do now is you can click Accept. That will save all of these configuration parameters to a configuration file that Eagle Code, EagleCAD will use every time you generate G-Code. If you click accept and make my board, it will save the parameters to the configuration file and then it will render the image of your board if you have the show preview checked and then generate your G-code files. I'm going to click accept and make my board. It generally takes a minute or so for it to generate the board depending on how many traces you have, how thick they are, and what components you have where. It will also show some funny little graphics while it's trying to render. It usually takes about 30 seconds for me. When it's finally finished, it will pop up a little preview. Uh, it opened in the other window there. So this shows the preview of the board. So here you can see that you actually have five passes, right? The darkest red pass is the first pass, while the green pass is the fifth pass. Now if you will notice that this is actually a fairly clean looking board, but I have actually modified one or two things to show that it's not perfect. For example, we can see that this right here is not supposed to intersect. Well actually, that one is, never mind. 
This right here is not supposed to intersect the ground plane, but it does anyway. You can see it's trying to get right around there, but it can't quite do it. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to go and I'd have to move C29 off to the side a little bit here and then reroute this trace so that the mill can get around there safely. Um, that is very important. When you first generate your G code files, it's going to be crazy. It's going to try and do all these things. You're going to have all these holes and short circuits. So it's very important that you come back and inspect this carefully. When you're finished, close the preview and click the OK button. Now your G code files will be saved to your project folder. So what you do is you go to Documents, Eagle, and then whatever you were in, whatever project, and then it will be mainboard dot bot for bottom dot drill dot tap for the drills, and then etch for the uh, traces, and then the top ones are going to be top etch and top drill. So I have it on the bottom, so I'm going to open the bottom etch file. And as you can see, we end up with quite a bit of G code here. So if you look carefully, you can see that all of these are in terms of X and Y, which is what the mill likes to use, and use the G functions. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know.